auto flight system can assist you at takeoff. It supplies flight director guidance and automatic thrust control. The autopilot can be engaged only after takeoff. The flight director supplies pitch and roll commands. During takeoff, the flight director gives roll commands for wings level and pitch commands to fly the climb profile. You use the auto throttle to set takeoff thrust and to reduce thrust to climb thrust after takeoff. To engage the takeoff mode, the two flight directors must be on. The flight director that is turned on first makes the related FCC the master FCC and illuminates a master flight director indicator. The master FCC sets the modes for the FCCs and controls enunciations on the FMAs. Turn on the flight director for the pilot flying first. You use the MCP to set the auto flight system for takeoff. During the pre-flight, you set V2 in the IAS mock window. To use the auto throttle for takeoff, you must set the auto throttle switch to arm. The auto throttle indicator light illuminates and the FMA shows that the auto throttle is armed. The thrust mode display or TMD shows the active N1 limit. TO shows that the auto throttle limit is takeoff thrust. To engage the takeoff mode, advance the thrust levers to approximately 40% N1 and let the engines stabilize. This helps make sure there is a symmetrical thrust increase to the takeoff N1. Next, push a toga switch. The N1 and toga enunciations show on the FMA. The flight director command bars show a 10 degree nose down pitch and the auto throttle advances the thrust to the N1 limit. At 60 knots, the flight director command bars move to show a 15 degree nose up pitch. This shows the initial target attitude when the airplane rotates after VR. It is not a rotation command. Above 80 knots, the auto throttle mode changes to thrust hold. In thrust hold, power is removed from the auto throttle. This protects against thrust lever movement if a system fault occurs. As with arm, thrust hold lets you manually move the thrust levers without a subsequent correction from the auto throttle. Check if takeoff thrust is set. If takeoff thrust is not set before the auto throttle mode switches to thrust hold, you must set the thrust manually. In this example, you must set the thrust manually. During initial climb out, the flight director command bars show the fixed 15 degree pitch target attitude. Once sufficient climb rate is acquired, the pitch bar commands MCP speed. V2 plus 20 knots. At 400 feet radio altitude, engage a roll mode, such as LNAV, Heading Select, or VOR Localizer. In this example, Heading Select is selected when you push TOGA. At 800 feet radio altitude, the auto throttle mode changes from thrust hold to arm. When you reach the flap retraction altitude and you push the N1 switch on the MCP, the thrust is reduced to climb thrust. Push the N1 switch now. The auto throttle field of the FMA now shows N1 and the TMD N reference N1 bugs show the new active N1 limit climb. When you increase the MCP speed to retract the flaps, 
the flight director no longer commands a speed of V2 plus 15 knots. Pitch is now set to maintain the MCP speed. If you engage an autopilot while in takeoff mode, the pitch mode automatically engages in level change. The pitch field of the FMA shows MCP speed and the auto throttle field shows N1. The MCP IAS Mach window and airspeed cursor change to V2 plus 15 knots. And the roll mode engages in heading select unless a different roll mode was selected after takeoff. The auto flight system goes out of the takeoff mode when an autopilot is engaged or a pitch mode is engaged. The auto flight system approach modes can be used for flight director only or single and dual channel autopilot approaches and can also control automatic landings. The go-around modes show flight director command bars and can supply commands to the autopilot. To fly a dual autopilot approach, you must arm the autoflight system for approach. Verify the inbound course is set on the MCP and the localizer frequency is tuned on the navigation radios. When the airplane is on a localizer intercept heading, push the approach switch. Verify that the approach mode is armed with the FMA. The pitch field shows glide slope and the roll field shows vorloke in small white letters. Next, push command on the second autopilot. This arms the second autopilot, but does not engage it. Vorlok changes from armed to active on the FMA after localizer capture. After localizer capture, Set the heading to match the inbound course. The auto flight status field enunciation shows single channel. This tells you that only one autopilot is engaged. At glide slope capture, Glide slope changes from an armed to an active mode. The TMD displays go around as the active N1 thrust limit. And you set the missed approach altitude on the MCP. At glide slope capture, the light in the approach switch goes dark. You cannot disengage the approach mode with the second push of the approach switch. To leave the approach mode after localizer and glide slope capture, you must push TOGA or disengage the autopilot and turn off the flight directors or retune a VHF navigation receiver. After glide slope and localizer capture, the second autopilot engages when the airplane is below 1,500 feet radio altitude. The single channel enunciation is removed. And flare armed is enunciated in the pitch field. Now the autopilot go around mode is also armed but is not enunciated. For a dual autopilot approach, you must select the second autopilot above 800 feet radio altitude. Below 800 feet radio altitude, you cannot engage the second autopilot. At 400 feet radio altitude, the autopilots automatically add an additional amount of stabilizer nose-up trim. If the autopilots disengage after this occurs, 
you must hold forward control pressure on the control wheel until you can manually remove the trim. If flare is not armed by 350 feet radio altitude, the autopilots automatically disengage. The flare maneuver starts at 50 feet radio altitude. The autopilot trims the airplane in the flare, the FMA pitch field changes to flare, and the flight director command bars are removed. The auto throttle reduces thrust to idle below 30 feet radio altitude, and the FMA shows retard. The auto throttle automatically disengages after touchdown, but you must manually disengage the autopilot. This shows the steps for a dual autopilot approach. A single autopilot approach is the same as the dual autopilot approach, but the second autopilot is not engaged after approach is selected. The single channel enunciation shows for the full approach. Flare is not enunciated and the flare and automatic touchdown capability are not available. And an autopilot go around is not available. With a single channel autopilot approach, you must flare and land manually. The autopilot must be disconnected before you reach 50 feet radio altitude. Go around mode is engaged when you push one of the two toga switches on the thrust levers. Two autopilots must be engaged for an autopilot go around. If one autopilot is engaged, only the flight director go around is available. When you push a toga switch for an autopilot go around, the auto throttle engages in go around. The thrust increases to a reduced go around N1 that produces 1,000 to 2,000 feet per minute rate of climb. The pitch mode engages in toga. and a target pitch of 15 degrees is commanded until the climb rate is between 1,000 and 2,000 feet per minute. At the target climb rate, the autopilot changes pitch to hold the maneuvering speed for the set flap position. The roll command holds the ground track. The FMA is blank in the roll field. The IAS mock window is blank and the airspeed cursor shows the maneuvering speed for the current flap position. As you retract the flaps, the airspeed cursor moves to the maneuvering speed for the new flap position. The airplane will automatically accelerate to the new target speed as the flaps are retracted. After the auto throttle is at the reduced go around thrust, a second push of the toga switch increases the thrust to the full go around thrust. The autopilot increases the pitch to hold the maneuvering speed for the set flap position. Above 400 feet radio altitude, you can engage a roll mode. Here, engage heading select. If you keep the auto flight system in go around mode and you are close to the missed approach altitude, the autopilot changes to altitude acquire and captures the missed approach altitude. 
When the go-around mode disengages, the last autopilot engaged in command also disengages and the MCP speed window is no longer blank. The MCP speed window shows the target speed that was active when the autopilot exited the go-around mode. The flight director go-around can be used on single autopilot approaches, on dual autopilot approaches before flare is armed, and on a manual approach. You can use the flight director go-around when you are below 2,000 feet radio altitude. If you start a go-around when the flight directors are off, the command bar will automatically pop up. To engage the flight director go-around, push a toga switch. Unless flare is armed on a dual autopilot approach, all autopilots disengage when you push toga. The flight director command bars show target pitch and roll attitudes to maintain track and flap maneuvering speed, but the pilot must control pitch and roll. If you engage an autopilot during a flight director go-around, the pitch mode engages in level change and the roll mode engages in heading select unless a different roll mode was engaged first. 